Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello uh, welcome to the course on uh, medical biomaterials we will continue on the topic of uh, um, mechanical properties of uh, some of the body parts such as uh, tissues, um, tendons and bones. So, if you look at the stress strain curve for a tendon, it exhibits a non-linear behavior. So, you can see uh, initially this is called a toe portion that means initially uh, this stress does not increase uh, with strain, but after certain strain it starts increasing and then it behaves in the normal uh, elastic and then the plastic. So, why does uh, this happen? This happens because the fibers gets aligned when you apply a um, force in the direction of the force. Okay. So, that is why we do not see much um, tension here, but uh, beyond a certain strain you see the normal behavior of the elastic. So, this highest slope uh, is about uh, 1 giga Pascal this matches with that of collagen that is why collagen is used quite a lot um, in many biomaterials um, especially if you want to mimic the tendon and other muscles. Elastin has a modulus of elasticity of 0.6 mega Pascal tensile strength of 1 mega Pascal ultimate elongation 100 percent. Collagen uh, modulus of elasticity is 1000 mega Pascal tensile strength or uh, 1 giga Pascal tensile strength is 50 to 100 mega Pascal ultimate elongation is about 10 percent. So, collagen um, has much uh, okay, lower ultimate elongation when compared to elastin. If you look at the human abdominal skin okay, if you look at the stress strain curve um, if the uh, force is applied perpendicular to the craniocaudal median that means uh, uh, if you consider an x-ray entering the head um, then if it is leaving the tail that is called the craniocaudal median. So, it is perpendicular to that and if it is parallel to that uh, we have two different stress strain diagrams as you can see here the stress strain diagrams are two different. So, um, if you apply a stress of 1 mega Pascal it may have around uh, um, 25 or 26 percent um, strain perpendicular to the craniocardial and if the stress is applied parallel then you may have almost 40 percent strain. Okay. So, both are very different. Okay. This is called mechanical anisotropy. anisotropy. So, uh, mechanical tropy um, because uh, if the load is applied in um, perpendicular and load is applied to the parallel we will get two different stress strain diagrams because the tissues are randomly arranged in layers. Okay. Um, so, it extends under small load okay, the, because the fibers get straightened and then aligned rather than stretched and upon further stretching they align and resist for the tension. Okay. So, if you look at the modulus of elasticity or the Young's modulus in the perpendicular direction it will be 52 mega Pascal if it is in the parallel direction it is uh, 46 mega Pascal okay. both are very different. So, depending upon how the, um, the tension is applied whether it is perpendicular or parallel it will exhibit two different uh, graphs as shown here. Um, if you look at mechanical properties of human tissues for example, skin tensile strength is very low 7.6 mega Pascal ultimate elongation is 78 percent that is uh, um, before it breaks it can elongate almost quite a lot actually you can see 78 percent. Look at tendon tensile strength is 53 mega Pascal ultimate elongation is 9.4. Okay. Um, heart valve that is a mistake spelling mistake heart valve um, heart valve arctic radial tensile strength is 0.45 mega Pascal if it is circumference it is 2.6 mega Pascal. Okay. Um, rota transverse is 1.1 longitudinal is uh, 0 0.07 very very low cardiac muscle tensile strength is 0 0.11 mega Pascal. Okay. So, depending upon the direction in which uh, the uh, 
stress or the load is applied uh, the tensile strength can be different actually and the ultimate elongation also can vary uh, depending upon how the load is applied actually. This is taken from uh, this particular reference. Um, if we look at a bone it is made up of uh, many different things like the mineral which is the appetite, then we have the organic matrix the collagen uh, which is predominantly uh, of the organic matrix and little bit of other material is also there. So, the mineral will be about 69 percent that is the appetite organic matrix is 22 percent out of which 90 to 96 is collagen um, then it contains 9 percent water ok. So, this is the composition of the bane, uh, bone ok uh, before it gets dried of course dried uh, the, all the water will go away then uh, you will have some of these two actually. Calculate the density of the bone if the density of the organic material is 1 gram per cc and the mineral is 3 point that is the appetite is 3.16 gram per cc. How do we do it? We can use the uh, mixture of rules ok. So, we will assume there is a um, density of the entire bone um, is mixture of these two that is 0 0.69 ok uh, into 3.16 plus um, 1 into 0.22 ok and then water is also there. So, 0 0.09 into 1 ok. So, the simple mixture rule is density is equal to rho 1 V 1 that could be mineral rho 2 V 2 that could be organic matrix rho 3 V 3 that could be water. So, 0 0.69 uh, is the mineral into 3.16 plus 0 0.22 into 1 0 0.09 into 1 that comes to 2.49 grams per cc. So, the density of the bone is uh, this ok. So, depending upon the changes in the ratio uh, of different parts of the bone or um, different uh, bones of different animals you could the density could be varying ok. Uh, Let us look at the mechanical properties of the bone again these change quite a lot depending upon the type of bone ok. Suppose I take the leg bone ok uh, we have the uh, femur that is here we call it thigh bone ok. Then uh, here the leg portion fibula and tibia uh, the modulus of elasticity this is the difference in modulus elasticity and you can see the difference in the compressive strength. Um, the femur has a very high compressive strength whereas the uh, fibula has very low compressive strength. Similarly, arm and the, the uh, arm here you have the forearm. So, you have the humerus and then outside is radius inside is ulna again uh, they have some difference in the modulus of elasticity ok and then again there is quite a significant difference in their compressive strength as well. The ulna has the lowest compressive strength whereas the humerus has the highest compressive strength. Um, if you look at the vertebra, vertebra uh, cervical modulus of elasticity is quite small 0.23 lumbar has 0.6. 0.16 and the spongy bone that is the bone which connect um, with the um, with the socket ok that is got a very very low modulus of elasticity 0 0.09 ok and the compressive strength also is much lower when compared to rest of the bones that is why uh, the cervical is a very very vertebra is a very very important uh, region where one does not like to um, put in too much uh, tension or compression ok because of these as you can see from this data actually ok. Uh, so, the values change quite dramatically if you look at the bones we are talking the tensile strength in the range of 120 to 150 whereas, when you come to vertebra it is uh, um, uh, we are talking in terms of uh, 1 to 3. So, almost 100 times less ok. Ok, let us look at uh, modeling of mechanical properties of bone because uh, bone um, as we saw contains uh, uh, the organic um, mat uh, organic matrix as well as uh, the inorganic material. So, it is a two components. So, we have the mineral uh, inorganic hydroxyapatite collagen. So, we can use the rule of mixtures again for calculating the modulus of elasticity. This is called the white model ok. So, force because the force uh, whatever is applied gets distributed um, on the mineral side as well as on the collagen side ok. So, as you know sigma the stress is equal to force by area is equal to modulus multiplied by strain 
ok. So, when we use this and this equation we end up as the modulus of the bone is given by the modulus of the mineral uh, volume of the mineral plus uh, E c into volume of the um, collagen phase ok. This is called the mixture, but uh, then the collagen fibers um, are not uni uh, distributed in the same direction they vary in their direction. So, there is another model uh, which is uh, taken where f is the fraction of the bone that conforms to the parallel direction and 1 minus f is the rest. So, if f is equal to 1 then we this will become the white model actually. So, we can say a fraction which uh, conforms a, a, in a parallel direction. So, that follows white model whereas, uh, the remaining portion does not follow the white model. So, we can get the um, modulus using this equation or we can get the modulus using this equation. This is the simple rules mixture <coughs> whereas, uh, this considers uh, part of the fraction is in the parallel direction rest of it is not in the parallel direction ok. These uh, type of equations are very useful if we want to calculate uh, the uh, modulus of uh, um, blends or modulus of bone which is a mixture of many different uh, uh, material. Let us look at one problem, <coughs> this is a bone it contains 28 percent organic, 78 percent water uh, sorry 78 percent mineral and 10 weight percent water. The density of organic is 1 gram per cc, mineral is 3.2 grams per cc, water is 1 gram per cc. Modulus is uh, 10 giga Pascal for organic, 100 giga Pascal for mineral. When we say mineral it is a uh, um, appetite and when you say organic it is collagen and 0 uh, modulus for water. What is the density of the bone? We can use the mixture rule, we did that problem before. Okay, so, we take those uh, ratios multiply by the corresponding densities and add up quite simple. So, rho is equal to rho 1 v 1 plus rho 2 v 2 plus rho 3 v 3. So, um, 0.7 into 3.2 uh, plus 0.2 into 1 into 0.1 into 1. So, the density is 2.54 gram per cc ok. Now, what is the strain percentage strain on the organic phase? If the bone is strained 0.1 percent, assume that the two phases are the same arrangement ok. So, what is the strain? So, the strain will get distributed according to their uh, weight. Before that let us do this, calculate the modulus of the bone, assume they are arranged parallel to the loading direction. So, obviously, we can use the white model. So, 0.2 into 10 plus 0 0.7 into 100 uh, plus 0 ok. So, that comes to so, uh, 0 0.7 into 100 for the mineral, 0 0.2 into 10 for the organic and 0 that gives you 72 giga Pascal. So, the modulus of the bone is 72 giga Pascal. So, mineral of course, contributes maximum that is because it is 78 percent organic and water of course, does not have contribute any way, any number towards the modulus. Now, what is the percentage strain on the organic phase if the bone is strained 0.1 percent? Okay. So, total we have is 0 0.9, uh, we have the organic is 0 0.2, okay. mineral is 0 0.7. Okay. So, um, so, this gives you 0 0.0077 0 percent for the um, mineral phase because we have taken mineral 0 0.7. So, for the organic it will be the other way. So, we put it as 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.9 ok. So, that will come to 0 0.023. So, the percentage strain for the organic will be 0 0.023. So, for the organic so it will be 0 0.1 minus 0 0.077 that will be 0 0.023 percent ok. Um, now, let us go to um, composite, composites are almost like blends. So, composites we can make composites of uh, uh, two polymers, composites of uh, a polymer and an inorganic material like glass ok, like we have the uh, um, glass reinforced polymer 
or we can have fibers, fiber reinforced polymer or carbon reinforced polymer. Um, we can have uh, two okay, metals um, combined or we can have a an, an ceramic and a metal combined together to form a composite. So, we can have different material even your uh, bone is a composite because we have the hydroxy appetite and the organic phase the collagen. So, typically you can have uh, uh, see the matrix and the inclusion. Inclusion could be sometimes they use glass beads, sometimes they use fibers, sometimes they use carbon, sometimes uh, uh, you can uh, use uh, um, another polymer in different uh, shape and size. So, these composites also um, can exhibit um, modulus of elasticity, but there are slight uh, challenges here because the way these uh, the inclusion material is aligning towards the load will have an effect on the um, tension as well as on the modulus actually. Like uh, we talked about uh, for uh, the skin here also or we talked about uh, for the, um, the previous example um, if they are aligned parallel or if they are not aligned parallel you can have two different situations right. So, same thing can happen on the composites also ok we will look at that ok. So, mechanical properties of composites. So, it consists of say like particles or fibers like uh, fiber reinforced plastic or uh, glass beads reinforced plastic or uh, um, or your bone like I said is a composite. So, and we have the continuous material that is called the matrix ok. Uh, so, I could be the inclusion material m could be a matrix. So, we can use the white model uh, e is equal to e m v m plus e i v i that is v m and v i or the uh, volumetric uh, properties volume, volume of the matrix and volume of the inclusion complex. Generally inclusion complex may be 5 percent, 10 percent, 20 percent and so on. So, this is the white model it is um, applicable when the load is like this you know it is parallel. Whereas, if the if the inclusion material is perpendicular then we are in trouble actually like this ok. Inclusion material is perpendicular then there is something called the reuse model reuse model ok where you say E is equal to 1 by V i divided by E i that is for the inclusion material plus 1 by 1 minus V i divided by E m that is for the matrix material. So, V i is the volume of the inclusion material 1 by V 1 minus V i is the volume of the um, it is volume fraction sorry it is volume fraction of the um, the matrix material ok. So, here um, these V's are volume fractions ok. So, um, these are the upper and lower bounds for E value. So, if you are not very sure um, what to calculate the E for a uh, blend ok the best thing is to use both the models and you will get two values and uh, your answer real life answer will be between those two ok. So, that is a good way. So, white model you use it if um, the load that is applied is a parallel whereas, you use the use model if they are perpendicular ok. Um, ok, let us look at a problem here. Imagine we have a, um, a stainless steel uh, a circular cross section 316 L with 1 mm radius and uh, a length of 4 mm. So, it is a rod stainless steel rod which is quite normally used especially in uh, um, orthopedic implants ok. And uh, it is coated uh, with 1 mm thick coating of titanium ok. Titanium is a very bio compatible and bio inert. So, titanium is very good for such purposes. So, it is coated with titanium. If you look at the stainless steel uh, the modulus is very high 200 giga Pascal titanium it is 100 giga Pascal yield strength of stainless steel is 400 mega Pascal yield strength of titanium is 200 density is 1.84 grams per cc density is 2.7 grams per cc. Now, I want to calculate uh, properties of this particular uh, okay, composite material. So, uh, volume of stainless steel it is a circular rod so 3.14 in pi r square height right. Um, it is 1 mm radius. So, 1 square into 4 and that is the height. So, it comes to 12.564 millimeter cube. Volume of titanium now this is uh, 
like a, a tube here ok the inner radius is 1 the outer radius is 2 tube outer radius of 2 mm inner radius is 1 mm. So, pi into r square minus r square 2 square minus 1 square into 4. So, this is 3 12. So, this is 37 millimeter cube ok. So, the volume of the stainless steel rod is 12.5 uh, millimeter cube the volume of the titanium tube like this is 37 millimeter cube ok. Now, volume fraction of uh, stainless steel. So, what do you do? You take 12.56 divided by this plus this ok. So, this is 0.25. So, volume fraction of titanium is 0.75. So, density of the composite uh, 0.25 into 7.84 plus 0.75 into 2.7 3.984 grams per cc that is the density of the um, material. So, as you can see it is more like a titanium because the volume of titanium is very high and you are using volume fraction in this uh, model ok. What is the Young's modulus of the composite ok. So, we know the Young's modulus for stainless steel is 200 for titanium. So, we use the um, ok the normal uh, uh, equation if you remember ok white model E is equal to E m V m plus E i V i. Um, so, we use that and um, 0 0.25 into 200 plus 0 0.75 into 100 we get 20, 125 giga Pascal. This is the uh, Young's modulus of the composite. If the composite is loaded in the longitudinal direction what will be the yield strength? Again we know the yield strength um, yield strength is 400 and 200 we can use the uh, same uh, white type of mixture rules 0 0.25 into 400 plus 0 0.75 into 200 250. Now, how much load it can carry without plastic deformation? So, we have to be careful because um, load is applied. Um, so, we have the titanium, we have the stainless steel ok. So, the total cross sectional area uh, is 3.14 um, multiplied by uh, 2 raised to the power 2 ok. How did you get this? So, we have a 1 mm here, another 1 mm here. So, the radius of the total thing is um, 2, 2 raised to the power 4 that is 12.56. Now, load is yield strength into area, yield strength is uh, ok, what is the yield strength 250, 250 into area is 12. Uh, so, that comes to 3141 um, Newton. Um, ok that comes to 3000, 3141 uh, Newton uh, ok one. So, from there um, that is the load it can carry without uh, it undergoing plastic uh, deformation ok. So, uh, we saw a lot of uh, interesting uh, problems uh, and lot of uh, uh, systems today. Uh, basically, we were focusing on uh, um, blends ok, we, we are looking at uh, composites because your bone is made up of a composite uh, situation, we have the mineral and we have the organic uh, collagen and um, some in um, implants many times we use composites or blend type of material, polymer polymer blends, sometimes we use polymer inorganic material composites. Uh, sometimes metal metal combinations are used ok. So, um, we looked at how to calculate uh, the um, density of the blend or the composite, how to calculate the modulus. We can use the rule of mixtures or we, we have different type of model available. Um, especially this situation comes if the inclusion material whether it is parallel to the uh, load that is supplied or whether that it is not parallel fraction of it may be parallel. So, they for that fraction we may be able to use the mixture rule, but remaining portion we will not be able to use the mixture rule. So, we have slightly different models coming into focus. So, um, the blends always will have this type of problem. So, if we have two different materials having two different properties with respect to density, tensile strength and modulus of elasticity, the properties of the overall material is going to drastically change. So, when you design biomaterials we need to keep that in mind. Uh, this happens in our bone um, which is a composite of uh, both uh, hydroxyapatite ok and um, collagen 
that is the one is the mineral that is the appetite and collagen is the organic phase. So, both of them have different uh, uh, modulus of elasticity. So, the bone properties also changes quite a lot. And I also showed you very interesting uh, uh, data on uh, the modulus of different types of bones. We saw that the vertebra uh, bones uh, have very, very, very low uh, modulus almost 1 by 100. Another interesting point we saw is the way the load is applied if you have say, uh, the skin of the stomach, um, the way the load is applied in whether it is longitudinal or whether it is in the parallel direction, um, the stress strain diagram uh, can be very different and uh, the for a given stress the percentage elongation can also vary. So, uh, we will continue in the next class on uh, um, some more properties related to biomaterials. Thank you very much for your time.